Alright, in this video we're going to talk about solving trig equations uh, using algebra and also some of the fundamental identities. Um, so let's get started. First question we have is um, 2 cosine squared of x over 3 plus 3 sine of x over 3 um, minus 3 equals 0. So I know that I can definitely change cosine squared into a sine squared by doing cosine squared equals um, 1 minus sine squared. So let's do that. Um, and when you do these things, you have kind of like no choice. Uh, you have to get one trig function. Uh, if you have two trig functions, unless you can kind of group factor, you're, you're kind of doomed. So uh, I want to get rid of that cosine. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. So now I'm just going to distribute, collect some terms. Um, so I have 2 and a minus 3, which gives me the minus 1 at the end. And then I have minus 2 sine squared, um, and then the 3. All right, uh, multiply through by a negative, because I do not like factoring with a negative leading coefficient. So I have this. And now this actually factors, so I'm going to factor it. Uh, if it doesn't factor, you can actually use the quadratic formula. If you use the quadratic formula, uh, you always want to make sure that uh, the value that you get is in the range of sine. So, for example, if you use quadri quadratic formula and you get that uh, sine of something has to be 5, well, that's not possible, so that's, that's just an extraneous solution. Well, it's not even a solution, it's just extraneous work, I guess. All right, let's solve each of these. So either this thing equals 0 um, or the other thing equals 0. So let's deal with this one. So this will give me um, sine of x over 3 equals 1 half. And that can be quadrant 1 or 2 because it's sine and it's positive. Um, and I know in quadrant 1, that means x over 3 would be pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. If you don't know the unit circle, you're in a bit of trouble on these. Um, so x equals pi over 2 plus 6 pi n, where n is an element of the integers. And then we'll deal with the quadrant 2. So in quadrant 2, we would have x over 3 is 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Um, or x is 5 pi over 2 plus 6 pi n, where n is an element of the integers. Um, and then you definitely want to check those. So I've checked them on a calculator. Uh, you could check them on paper or on a calculator. It's up to you. Um, but those are solutions. Now I have to deal with this other factor. So additionally, uh, sine of x over 3 minus 1 could equal 0, or sine of x over 3 could be 1. I think about that, and I know that that happens at uh, pi over 2. So x over 3 could be pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, um, which means that x is 3 pi over 2 plus 6 pi n. And you'd want to check that also. So those are the three types of solutions you get. So let's look at another problem. So here I have secant of x plus tan of x equals radical 3, and x is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. So um, a little trouble here because secant and tangent, I know a relationship between them, but it involves squares. So I actually know this relationship, 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to uh, get some squares involved. So I'm going to square both sides. But first what I want to do is, if I square it the way it currently is, I'll end up with a secant tangent term, and I don't really want that. So what I'll do is rearrange it first. These are the sorts of things that you learn with practice, um, or trial and error, actually. Uh, so now I'm going to square both sides of this. So on the left, I get secant squared. On the right, I get uh, square the first term, multiply them together, and then times 2. So minus 2 radical 3 tan x, square the last term. So hopefully you can square these things out relatively quickly. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is replace secant squared with 1 plus tan squared. So I get this, um, and then that'll be equal to that side over there. So now we're kind of in familiar territory. Move everything to uh, one side if we can. So the tan squares actually cancel out, which is great because I didn't want to have to deal with those. Um, I get negative 2 is negative 2 root 3 tan x. And that means that tangent of x is 1 over radical 3 or radical 3 over 3, which I know um, can come from quadrants 1 or 3. So either x is pi over 6 or x is 7 pi over 6. Um, and now I'm going to check those. So whenever you square both sides, you definitely need to check. I mean, I think you should check no matter what. But if you square both sides, you better check because you can definitely introduce extraneous solutions. So let's check um, pi over 6. So if we have pi over 6, what we're really looking at is secant of pi over 6 plus tan of pi over 6. And I know those values are 2 over root 3 plus 1 over root 3, which is 3 over root 3, which we can rationalize to root 3. So that works. Um, then if we check 7 pi over 6, we're going to have a problem. Um, and the problem is that uh, 7 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant, so the secant is going to be negative. So I get negative 2 over root 3 
plus 1 over root 3. Uh, which gives me negative 1 over root 3, which is not equal to root 3. So that is not a solution. So the only solution I get in this particular case is just pi over 6. And let's do one more. So here I have 3 tan squared of cosine x minus 3 cosine of x. Uh, what is that? Plus 2 equals negative 2 tan squared of x. Um, so I'm going to move everything to uh, one side here. So subtract 2 tan squared of x from both sides to this, and then uh, what I can actually do is if you look at the first two terms, there's a tan squared in both of them, so I'm going to factor that out. So greatest common factor, or factoring by grouping. Um, and then from the second two terms, I'm actually going to factor out a negative one, so that the thing inside parentheses matches, which is kind of always your goal when you're doing these things. Um, so now if you look at it, both of these have a 3 cosine of x minus 2, so I factor that out of both of them to get um, 3 cosine of x minus 2 times tan squared minus 1 equals 0. So uh, either this equals 0, so 3 cosine of x minus 2 equals 0, which means cosine of x is 2 thirds. Um, cosine and it's positive, so it could come from 1 or 4. Quadrant 1, we get x is the inverse cosine of 2 thirds plus 2 pi n, where n is an element of the integers. And then in quadrant 4, uh, you could do 2 pi minus the inverse cosine, or you can just do negative inverse cosine, which is what I've chosen to do, because it's just a little easier, right? So I get both of those, I should check both of those, but they both check. Um, that's definitely a calculator type of check. Um, and then we have tan squared of x minus 1 is 0, which means tan squared of x could be 1, uh, which means either tan of x equals 1, or tan of x equals negative 1. So if it equals 1, we're in quadrants 1 or 3, um, so that could be pi over 4 plus pi n, where n is an element of the integers. Um, and then if it's negative 1, we're in 2 or 4, and that'll give me 3 pi over 4 plus pi n, where n is an element of the integers. Uh, we check it, and both of those check. Um, in this case, I didn't square anything, so I'm unlikely to have gotten extraneous solutions. It's really when you square both sides. Um, if you kind of foolishly divide both sides by a trig function, you can lose solution, so I don't recommend you do that. Uh, you should always bring it all to one side and factor instead. Um, and don't forget your fundamental identities, but uh, that's three uh, pretty good examples, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.